And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here. Rock god Rick Maxa off to Alaska Airlines nonstop to Puerto Vallarta to go on the journeyman. Our three and a half day Let's Talk hookup trip down there starts this afternoon. And that's going to be a good one. We'll hear from Rick next weekend. Hey, in the studio with me, we have... The life of Brian. Brian Sims, Brian Kihara, American Angler, and Royal Star. Oh, what a great show. I'm, I am learning so much this show. You guys are such a wealth of knowledge and really need to have different perspectives from two guys that spend their life on the water. And if you want to join us, there's lines open right now. A one line open. If you want to get through the local line, is 858 457 1090. And two lines open at 877 792 1090. That's 877 792 1090. Get through because it's going to be a busy second hour here. And one lucky caller in honor of Captain Ryan Boschen, who's a little under the weather, but I have rebooked Brian. He's going to be here in April. Uh, Three quarter day trip on the San Diego out of Sea Forest Water Fishing. Who knows? Maybe Brian Kier Harby running the boat that day when you go fishing. <laughs> It'd probably be Cameron. Yeah, Cameron, yeah. And then uh, two tickets to the Fred Hall. Del Mar show coming up at the Del Mar Fairgrounds March 23rd through the 26th. We'll be there, and it's going to be a great show, and looking forward to that. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and find out what's biting out there. Our fishdope.com report from your saltwater guide, Dave Hansen's on the, on the line here, and it's sponsored in part by Terrafin Sea Surface Temperature Charts. Focus your offshore fishing on the most Productive areas using Terrafin. Now Terrafin Mobile, take it with you on your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device. Just download the latest chart before you leave, and all the information is right there in front of you. Check Terrafin.com for more information. Or better yet, see Jeff and the gang in their booth at the Fred Hall Del Mar Show for a special deal on Terrafin, a must-have deal. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning, Pete. Good morning, Brian. Brian. Good morning. morning. What's going on out there? Oh, my gosh, we've been all over the place this week. We've been up in Marina del Rey. We've been over at Catalina. We've been at Clemente. We've been on the coast, down there off San Onofre. And I'll tell you, the water bounced back pretty bitch, and it's really, really blue all over the place. Out there at Clemente, it's like purple on the outside there, outside of desperation. Out towards the Cortez, the water's purple out there. Then the water on the coast bounced right back. It's 61, 60 and a half. And the calico bass are jumping around, a little barracuda. It's kind of looking like springtime already out there. You know, we had good fly line bass fishing on, what was it, Wednesday, down in the kelp there off of uh, Barge Rock, just below our harbor there in Dana Point. Then we had really good hoop netting up there in Marina del Rey. And we got a six-gill shark in 25 feet of water inside the hoop net, a 100-pound six-gill. It was pretty bizarre. He was wow. in the net. Is, is, a, is that a seven gill with minus one gill? Yeah, well, that's what they told me. I sent the pictures <laughs> off, and they told me it was a six gill, so I got to okay. believe them. I don't know what wow. it was. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we got him on the deck. I mean, it took two guys to lift the hoop net on the boat. He was inside the hoop net spinning around like a whirlpool in there. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. That's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I told the guy, pull, pull. What is wrong with you? Pull it. They're just lobsters. And then I saw the thing. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a sh- giant shark. <clears throat> then we were over at Clemente yesterday, Pete. The water over at Clemente, you can see down 100 feet. The visibility is incredible. Rockfish fishing was really, really good out there on Desperation. Lots of white fish, lots of that smaller grade red snapper. Very, very good fishing. And then the front side's polluted with that bigger yellow, t- or excuse me, that bigger bonita, that five to seven pound bonita. It's all over the front side of Clemente. I think we're just sitting on the edge of a powder keg here. I think things are starting to happen. There's squid at Catalina on all the standard spots there. The problem is the California sea lion is everywhere you can possibly imagine. 
Unfortunately, these storms didn't do anything to curb the population of the sea lions, unfortunately. We were hoping that we'd get a little relief from them from all the storms, but it didn't even help at all. But, you know, everything just seems to be happening. We got great weather all this week. So all I can say, like I say every week, is find a boat and go fishing or go fishing on your boat, but you just got to get out there and go fishing. That away, Dave, and fishdope.com, a must-have for anglers out there that want the current information. Uh, uh, 20 bucks off, 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com right now if you use the code HOOKUPNOW, lowercase, no space, fishdope.com is your source. And, Dave, how do we find you? Well, first of all, I want to ask Brian, what do you guys think? This water is so beautiful. It's so blue. It's looking like there might be albacore this year. What do you guys think? What do you think? Well, I, I, I think, think there's going to be. Yeah, I, th- I think I covered it yesterday. Brian covered it already this morning. But from what we've seen historically, it would make sense. Back to normal water temperatures, back to clean water, a lot of bait around offshore. That Already bluefin is, around. Already bluefin around. Yeah. It would, That's why it I'm would surprise say, me. It would surprise me if it didn't show up more than if it did. And that's why it's going to be super important to be a Fish Dope member this year because you're going to want to be on that fish when it shows up, and we're going to let you know when it happens. So give me a call at 949-374-0786 or look me up on the web at yoursaltwaterguide.com, and I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that very much. And one line open now. Lines are packed, but one line open at 877 877- 792-1090. You better grab it while you can. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones and talk to Dennis in Linda Vista. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Pete. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. The last three years have been hard. I've been battling cancer, but it looks like this year I'm going to be able to go fishing. I haven't even been able to go out to the Fred Hall boat show. I've been that sick. But uh, can you tell me if there's a website I can look at? Because every well, in the past, I've gone out there, and there's so much stuff to do. I can't plan my day. Uh, FredHall.com is is your deal. FredHall.com. They have all the seminars. They have all the information on it. It's a great website. They keep it updated. FredHall.com. You can make your plan, and uh, we'll see you there. At, uh, of course, it's uh, it's not this coming week, but the following week, Thursday through Sunday, the 23rd to the 26th at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Look forward to seeing you there, Dennis. Thanks a lot for the call. Glad to hear you're back in health and ready to go fishing. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Doug in Montebello. Doug, you're on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. I've got two questions now. Uh, how hard is it to take the spectra out of the seals off your uh, propeller? And then, two, what happens when you guys hit a lot of fog? This is private and sport boat. Like this morning. Taking, <laughs> taking the spectra out of your propeller. You know, I don't deal with a lot of outboards, but I'll bet that once it gets wrapped onto that hub, you got to take the prop off and get in there with some yep. kind of sharp implement, razor blade, sharp pocket you knife. got to do it, right, Brian? For my, for my skiff, it tears my seals up. Yep. Yeah, it'll it, tear it, your seals it, up really quickly. It, it, it's bad. Yeah, if you don't get all that spectra out, and that's a good question because a lot of people don't know that. They just think, oh, we'll just cut it off and be fine. But that stuff, if it's still in there, it's going to wreck your seals, and then it's going to eventually wreck your motor, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Fog, high quality radar. Yeah. If you don't have one, don't go out. Yep. You bet. Like that Simrad 4G is amazing. How good that is, and it's an affordable uh, radar. It's 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 pretty amazing. Uh, you can see stuff. It's It's Randy put that on his skiff. He could see seagulls sitting yeah. in the water. Yeah. Pretty awesome stuff. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. That does free up eight seven seven. 792-1090. Let's talk to Dan in Encinitas. Good morning, Dan. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I have a couple questions. One is, uh, when do you start moving into, uh, like, a hollow braid and then crimping and crimping hooks and what pound sets do you want to start crimping? And uh, during your season or during the summertime, if you got a couple days off and the fishing is really good, will you throw in, like, a day and a half open party? If the fishing is as good as it was last year, thanks. We do have day day and a half on, on the American Angler sprinkled throughout the season. Kind of like yeah, a, and, yeah. and we we don't on Royal Star, and our our schedules for both of us are so tight that uh, we're doing same day turnarounds all summer long. So the boats in and out, and uh, the only the only time we throw those things in is if we get the rare trip that we end up canceling. 
then we'll throw some shorter stuff in to, to bring some new people into the industry. Yeah. Now, when when are your day and a half, Brian? We we, we have some sprinkled out throughout. We yeah. we have in, a few in July. We have a few in September. In, are there availability? Not very much. Yeah. No. So on your website, can you check availability? Absolutely. And and it's one of these things in, in May. There's a, a distinct possibility that we're going to run short trips, depending upon if we finish our maintenance uh-huh. quick enough. If if we do get our maintenance done and there's fish biting in May, we're you know we're fishermen. We like to fish. So such a cool way to 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 kind of get introduced to getting hooked on long. Oh, a- absolutely. It, it's one of our best marketing strategies. People come out and they realize that we're just you know we're normal people and we there to show people a good time. Yeah. Now yesterday, Brian Sims, you mentioned that there was availability in June on a three and a four day trip and an eight day trip. Exactly. Um, still availability on those. You want still. to go to rollstarsportfishing.com. Yep. Or call Tracy in our office at six one nine two two four four seven six four. But three and a four day right at the end of June, that bluefin should be around and biting up and about. Right, yeah. And then what about the American Angler? We have a few spots open on some eight day trips. The pretty much the beginning of June beginning is of June. is what yeah. we have. And then we have a few availabilities left in November on a six day and a seven day. Really. And uh, once again, to call Lori. Two two three five four one four. Yeah, or American Angler Sport Fishing dot yep. com. Um, on your, uh, we talked about this last last year. June was the month, and that amazes me that you guys still have the availability. People are such get to, anglers get to be in such patterns, right? Well, I'm going to go fishing in July and August and September and October, but they forget. We're in this pattern now where June is a good month. It's probably the best month of the year. Yeah, you know, our our spring 8-day trips revolve around Laos rocks, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And it's been the cycle for seven years, I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Six or seven years. Six. We just haven't seen that anchor yellowfin tuna fishing. Ho- hopefully it's available this June. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll see. Yeah, everything coming back to normal after El Nino. Hopefully that fish slides back in there and and basically goes back to normal what we've expected and then those june trips will fill june's just been a, a tough time to fill the boat i don't know whether it's kids are just getting out of school and family vacations are right away or, or what's going on but the fishing has been great yeah you know and, and you look at the boat's schedules and the boat's prices trips in june are cheaper than they are any other time of year yeah price to sell price to sell so you jump on it check out each one of those thanks a lot for the call this morning let's head to Bikersfield and talk to Bart Hall from the Fred Hall Show in Bakersfield. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, Brian and Pete. How are you? Good morning, sir. Morning. Good. So, so uh, yesterday was our Saturday, and um, so I, I walk into the fishing hall that we created, and a uh, guy walks up to me, and I, I wasn't paying attention. It was Frank Lepresti, and he goes, well, congratulations. He says, I've been coming up here for years. This is by far the best day I've ever seen. So we were Fantastic. quite pleased. Uh, I guess this is our new baseline, according to the ticket takers. They've never seen a day like this up here. So we hope for another good one today. But it was a lot of fun to see so many fishermen come out and to realize that, uh, you know, there, there's, there's fishermen everywhere, and there's, there's, there's more saltwater tackle being sold up here than freshwater. <laughs> it's really quite amazing. That's interesting. Why do you yeah. think that is, Bart? Well, if you think about it, if you want to fish in the ocean um, – and you live in Bakersfield, you're going to go to Avila or you're going to go down to uh, or the closest place is Channel Islands. Uh, of course, if you want to come down to San Diego, it's not that big a deal, uh, especially these days. But uh, it's just interesting. I think part of it is the fact that they haven't any water in the lakes for a few years, so the guys who like to fish have done more saltwater fishing. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's pretty much a mix up here, much more a mix than you would think. We, everybody thought it was all going to be freshwater. Of course, last night we did go out to dinner, and, and the, our waitress says, you guys are the Fred Hall Show? I said, yeah. She says, well, we just bought a Ranger Bass Boat, and we're so excited. We came to your show on Friday. Oh, it was great. So Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it, I, know, really important. I know Brian's and Brian's know that they you guys get a lot of business out of Bakersfield, yeah, right? Yeah, when we had the queen up in Morro Bay, it's the amount of people that fished with us from Bakersfield was phenomenal. It was amazing. Yeah, and they, and they come all the way down to San Diego and fish with us. I mean, we're we're both just shaking our we're looking at each other, shaking our heads. Just going, no way. No, 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 no. Those guys go fishing. Yes. Well, these are sportsmen up here. I mean, they fish and they hunt. And uh, I swear to God, everybody comes in here is wearing a camouflage hat. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. It, it's amazing. But they got money. These are oil men. I mean, we told you yesterday <laughs> about that story. A guy walked up to Mark Dakin at uh, Inland Boats and bought a boat for cash. You know, I mean, that's what you got up here. You have a lot of people who do cash transactions. And Eric Herman from uh, Executive Yachts up here, the Parker dealer, he said he's in Channel Islands, and he said 90% of his business comes from Bakersfield. So that was all very encouraging to us, but we never knew until we did it. And, you know, it's kind of like build it and they'll come. And we didn't know, but, you know, hopefully to hit today is another good day. If it is, then or we have a new baseline, and we're on the road to promoting sport fishing in another location. That's so, so fantastic. Very exciting. And, and yeah. I, 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 I have to throw out kudos to our, our good buddy, Craig Pops, from the Kitchen Agency. He's uh, the marketing guy for the show. I'm sure Craig did a phenomenal job getting the word out in Bakersfield there, too. He did, and Craig was up here on opening day, and uh, he's, he's quite a guy. We really like Craig, and... You know, he's a former manager, uh, a former vice president of J. Walter Thompson, so he knows the advertising business and has for years and lives in San Diego and, of course, is in charge of all of our campaigns for the Fred Hall shows. And uh, our good friend Amy Foley down there is our PR girl. So uh, we're really anxious to get back to San Diego. You know, that is my favorite show of the three Fred Hall shows, and we just can't wait to get back into our, our own backyard and uh, close down the year with all of our friends in San Diego. So. This will be our last day here. We'll pack it up tomorrow and head back down the coast. You get a uh, get a week off, right? You're just going to rest for a week before you come to San Diego. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to put the computers back in the office and and try to fix all the stuff we missed because we've been trying to do so much in such a short time. Sure. All right. Well, what, if somebody's coming to Bakersfield today, what's the uh, what's the deal? How, what time's it open and uh, how do we get there? We open at ten and we close at five. And uh, uh, adults are twelve dollars. Kids fifteen and under are free. And by the way, I know that Rick is not actually on a fishing trip. I know that because it's daylight savings time. He just left because the show is supposed to be over by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's actually going on the journeyman, Bart. Believe it or not. Uh, good yeah, for him. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Hey, Bart. Bart Hall, from Bakersfield <laughs> Show. Congratulations on the success and uh, keep it rolling. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate Bye-bye. the call this morning. All right. Let's jump into the phones. They're packed up. Want to talk to you guys. Let's go ahead and talk to uh, Rich calling us from Bradley. Good morning, Rich. Good morning. Good morning, Rich. Hey, um, you guys uh, covered finding uh, Yellowtail from your own skiff pretty well and uh, made me think about one that's a little harder to find is the white sea bass finding from your own skiff, you know. When you're on your own skiff, you don't have a crew to listen to, so you kind of have to make it up as you go along. So I'm hoping maybe you can give us some inside baseball uh, finding those gray ghosts. And uh, one other thing is a tip for Dennis that was talking about navigating his way through the Fred Hall show is just go for two days. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, yeah, that'll cover it. Enough time to miss it and go back and catch it the next time. Um, the sea bass thing, you know, my perspective on it, I don't do all that much skiff fishing, but I, I've got a lot of friends that go, and I, I get out with them periodically. I think the biggest thing for those sea bass is to find the bait. Find the bait, get the bait, get in the area where that bait is, because that's the area that that fish is going to congregate in, because that's where the food supply is. Right? Putting your time in. Time. For, for sea bass, it's time. Time, time on the water. The water. You, yeah. have, you know, you have to find that area where that bait supply, whether it be squid or mackerel or chovy or sardine. And you have to put your time in. Yeah, it's a just, lot of time. A lot of time. And a lot of time, it's overnight, all night, fishing. It's not easy, but the rewards are good. Not yeah. easy. Yeah, for sure. Hey, but thanks tasty. a lot. <laughs> yeah, tasty for sure. <laughs> thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Tom in San Diego, you're up, Tom. Well, good morning. How are you doing here? Hey, Tom. I, uh, I primarily wanted to ask about what uh, what they're noticing Traveling up and down Baja offshore, look at the uh, the bluefin population, and also, can you tell me what you think are the sweet spots for the difference between a Talica 16 and 20? What do you what do you let, let's go right to that Talica question? What do you mean by the sweet spots between well, 16 and 20? Well, I mean, 20? a 16 has a certain range or uh, line capacity, size of fish, uh, casting ability. The 20 is a little heavier, so I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If somebody, if somebody Looking for the hundred pound tuna. Would the sixteen work, or would you go for the heavier? Well, the six the sixteen will work just fine. I mean, if you're fishing fifty pound test on that thing, when you when you step it up to sixty, it works fine for a little bit. You know, we we have the a lot we have sixteens and we have twenties on the boat as uh, as boat reels, and we found at Guadalupe last year that that hundred ten, hundred twenty, hundred twenty five pound fish 
we started to get some malfunctions because those reels are such on such heavy use with the 16s. The 20s rock solid for that 100-pound class fish. So I, my recommendation would be go with the bigger reel and get the job done. For private use, as many fish as you're catching, I think those 16s would actually work out just fine for you. It's just boat gear, you know, day in, yeah. day out, 125 pounders ripping off them, you know. So and the and the 16s a little easier to cast, smaller reel, smaller in your hand, a little easier to, especially when if that sardine is small again like we had, uh, it's a little easier to cast a small sardine with the 16 versus the 20. It is for sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning, Tom. Appreciate that. And when we come back, more of your phone calls. More with Brian and Brian right here. American Angler Royal Star represented well by their captains. And your phone calls at 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. More Let's Talk Hookup coming up on the Mighty 1090. This is Rick Jensen with Sport Fishing Financial. I think most of you get that I'm a fisherman and work with the fishing community, but to understand exactly what Sport Fishing Financial does, ask yourself these four questions. First, do you really know how much money you'll need in order to retire comfortably? Next, do you know how much you'll have to save on a regular basis to reach that number? Do you have a process that includes a proven investment strategy and confidence that the money you save will grow? Last, do you have a plan for how to turn your savings into retirement income? If you don't have good answers to these questions, you're not alone, but you should, and I can make sure you do. In addition, if you own a business and currently provide or are planning on providing a retirement savings plan for yourself or your employees, we should really talk. We offer an outstanding variety of creative solutions that are sure to meet your needs. Some of our listeners may feel overwhelmed. Others may believe they are already doing the best they can. In either case, I bet Rick can help. Set a time to meet with him and start planning for your personal or business investment success. Find Rick on the web at sportfishingfinancial.com or give him a call at 949-481-1807. Inland Boat Center is the destination for your next boat. They've been around 35 years, so they're here to stay with something for everyone. Inland Boat Center has a giant inventory of all types of boats, including the perfect saltwater fishing boats made by Arima and Defiance. Inland Boat Center has a huge 2.5-acre indoor showroom with over 300 new and pre-owned boats, making them the largest boat store on the West Coast. Family-owned and operated, they are proud of their customer service. They take trades of all types. Come check out their inventory of Defiance boats from 20 to 29 feet or the fantastic selection of the amazing Arima boats from 17 to 21 feet. Inland Boat Center has a full-service department, fiberglass repair and upholstery department. Everything you need is under one roof at Inland Boat Center, 681 East San Jacinto in Paris. Check the website for the current inventory and more at InlandBoatCenter.com. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next-generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com. And find a dealer near you. When bad weather and rough seas send other boats back to the docks, Sea Keeper allows you to fish longer and fish harder, even in the roughest conditions. Don't believe us? Just listen to what Southern California's own Captain Pete Grosbeck says. He says we're very impressed with the whole operation of the Sea Keeper. We live bait a lot. We go slow, which puts us in the trough. And now basically there is no trough. Sea Keeper's newest offering, the Sea Keeper 3, is optimized to eliminate up to 95 percent of boat roll on boats between 30 and 39 feet. Even better, the gyro is so small it can fit inside a customized leaning post, bringing installation down to a mere two days. To learn more about how Seakeeper can change your life on the water and to schedule your free demo, go to Seakeeper.com. Take a ride. Be amazed. Seakeeper. It's Fred Hall Show time, and Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the best selection and the hottest deals in the show. You will not want to miss our largest ever eyewear selection from Costa. Fisherman's Landing Tackle has so many styles of Costa sunglasses that you are sure to find the perfect pair. That's Costa and Fisherman's Landing Tackle. For East Cape Fishing, Jen Wren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service, top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, Calstar rods, and Cibran electronics, has put my immaculately maintained twin-engine cruise 
users in a class of their own. For memories of a lifetime, just bring your hat and sunglasses and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations. Our calendar is filling fast, so don't miss out. For packages, two live webcams, a weekly fishery report, and more, check out TeamGenRen.com. We pick up at all East Cape resorts, so let's go fishing. This is AFRS 1090 AM, Rosarito, Baja California. The best Major League Baseball coverage is right here. Deep and very gone. A blast to left field. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here, along with the Bryans. Brian Sims from the Royal Star. Brian Kiohar from the American Angler. Got to check out this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Always loaded with fantastic information. Uh, this week, man, did you see the steelhead on the front page of that? Unbelievable. Giant steelhead. And then some giant halibut and a lot of other good stuff, too. Stuff about the show in Long Beach last week and more. So check it out this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Hey, let's go to live to the, Andrew calling us from the Thunderbird. Good morning, Andrew. Hey, good morning. How you guys doing this morning? Doing great. What's going on, hey, Andrew? Out here. Hey, Brian. Good morning. Hey, we're just out here on uh, St. Clemente Island doing a little bit of rock fishing. You know, it's been uh, it's been great rock fishing for us out here the past couple of weeks. Um, we're actually out here doing it right now. I, I would say we're about halfway towards limits. Um, and yesterday, you know, it was real good. Probably the best rest fishing we've seen. I, I would say for our 22 guys, I think we had uh, six around on the uh, nice quality rest for uh, for that half of our limit there. Nice. That's fantastic. And the weather's beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd say right now we have maybe seven or eight knots of breeze and really no swell. Just enough to uh, get a good drift going. Sweet. Any sign of yellowtail around? You know, not yet. We haven't caught anything yet, but we've been pretty fortunate. We've been able to keep um, at least five or six scoops of live squid on the boat. And because this rock fishing has been so good to us, it uh, kind of leaves us two, three hours at the end of the day to uh, be thorough and make sure we're not uh, missing anything. You know, yesterday the water has slowly been creeping up. I did find some uh, 61 and a half degree water. It's the warmest we've seen yet. And, uh, you know, I saw, you know, what looked to be um, looked to be some yellowtail or some sort of game fish, but uh, unfortunately we didn't uh, we didn't have any current and couldn't get them to bite. But uh, we're hoping it's just a matter of time. If we can keep some squid on the boat and this water slowly keeps uh, warming up, hopefully one of these days uh, we'll get them to go. Now, where are you running the uh, uh, Thunderbird out of, Andrew? Davy's Locker. We're running out of Davy's Locker. Okay, and somebody wants to go fishing with you? Are you running regular trips out over to San Clemente? Yeah, yeah. We have trips scheduled uh, every day of the week, departing at 9 o'clock. And if uh, anyone wants to come fishing with us, they can make a reservation online, or uh, they can call our office at uh, 949-673-1434. All right, Andrew, and thanks for the check from San Clemente Island aboard the Thunderbird. Live squid. Great red fishing and prospects for more coming up. Appreciate the call this morning. Thank you. All right, very good. Hey, our old buddy Dan Hart's on the line. Good morning, Dan. Hey, good morning, Pete. How are you doing this morning? Great. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to be on the bay this morning. It's pretty nice. It's uh, fog, okay. and we got about a half a mile of visibility. But we've got like a dozen sand bass this morning on what's left of this incoming tide. It's been pretty Sweet. nice fishing this morning. That's good fishing. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. If you guys get a chance, you should come out. It's a nice day. It's still foggy, but uh, the weather's, you know, warm enough, and uh, and they're biting. They're biting here. We're at Ballast Point just fishing across from that, and it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Nice day on the water, and uh, that fog should burn off, right? Now we're expecting it pretty, pretty soon. The visibility has been about the same since we put it on the water about two hours ago, but but uh, it's, uh, it's going to burn off here in a little bit, yeah. Fantastic. Well, nice report, Dan. Appreciate that. They're biting and the good good tidal movement today. So is that important for that, Dan? Oh, yeah. you got to have moving water. It's starting to slow down now. So the tide's going to be uh, uh, high at 945, and we got about an hour left till then, and it's starting to slow down now. All right. Well, Dan Hart, for sure appreciate the check from the bay, and uh, keep getting them, okay? All right, guys. All Take right. Care. Have a great Thanks. day. Enjoy your day today. Hey, let's go live to the Royal Star. Captain Tim Ekstrom's on the line. Good morning, Tim. Hey, guys. Good morning. Just got in here to the lovely Cabo San Lucas Harbor, man, live. Live from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. How's the weather down there? God, what a beautiful day. Absolutely flat, calm. 
we had, we had a beautiful ride across, man. You know, coming up from that that area around uh, the outside of, of the, you know, the buffer zone there at Clarion, where we finished up, we just had a flat, calm ride almost the entire time. Just we had, we had one day we got rolled around during the trip, but otherwise the weather has just been extraordinary. The uh, the fishing, you know, overall, I wouldn't, it, it was far from extraordinary. But we ended up scratching out a catch. You know, it was that old, uh, you know, stay at it, get them one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, and in the end they add up. So we made our catch here. We got five fish over 200 pounds to complement our, our catch to tuna and wahoo. We, we we rounded it out pretty darn well in the end, but. Boy, I'll tell you what, talk about frustrating seeing just a ton of fish and just fish that don't want to bite, you know. They just kind of give you the business. They jump all over the place, and, and you get one here and there. But, you know, potential is what it's all about. We definitely put ourselves in the position to make the most of the opportunities we had. Again, just beautiful weather. We made the tour. We, we, we spent a couple days out at Hurricane Bank, got a few big ones out there, worked our way back in and around the island. Just a beautiful trip overall. What a great uh Great time. How about this, guys? So, you know, wh- where where in the world can you go for 11 days of, of, of fishing? Eight, actually, we had eight days of fishing out there. We never saw a boat of any kind. For eight days, we were the only boat on the water in our own world. That's pretty awesome, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to our 11-day fly-down fly back there in May, and that's uh, always a good time and good fun. Now, what about the Wahoo fishing? How was the Wahoo fishing? You know, we scratched it out. There weren't a whole hell of a lot of them around, but we had we, we had a couple of good shots at them. We had uh, you know we had only 15 guys in this trip. It was a limited load charter, which was just like fishing a private yacht. My goodness! But but we had a couple of days where we accumulated 25 or 30 of them. So they added up. You know, and, and then the same thing, like I was saying, you know, one here, one there, five here, a handful there, and, and, and next thing you know, you end up with a, with a darn nice catch of fish. I think everybody had had plenty of wahoo, no doubt about it. To, to Put something on the table here for the next few months. So, you know, a successful trip, guys. This has been a it's been an odd year thus far at these islands. You know, there's been there's been a few flashes in the pan, but it really hasn't taken off. So, you know what that means, Pete, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's Bring waiting it. for you. Come May, come April. We're, We're actually scheduled after this. The, the guys are going to make a quick jaunt up the line in three days, and we tie up for our annual maintenance period. We're going to be out of commission, off the water for just over a month before coming back out in the third week of April. All right. And I know Gerby's really looking forward to that part, right, Gerby? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so, I, I love that maintenance period. I get to get into the projects that, that you can't do when the boat's the running all the time. And just spiff it up, make it all clean, shiny, and oh, new yeah. again. That's what's so nice. And then you get back on the boat, and it's all brand new. Now it's back to what we love to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, yeah, Tim. And, and you know, the, the the other thing is we like doing that. Uh, you know, that's a big part of our, our our pitch, you know, between Brian, Randy, and I. We're all of us, actually, on this crew. We're real hands-on, you know, in all these projects that we make a list of during the year. And there's a lot of satisfaction that comes with 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 keeping the boat in tip-top working order with your own hands. And, and, and then when something does go awry, which, you know, it's a boat, things happen when you're out in the water 300 days a year. We know exactly what to do, you know, how to do it, because we've got a, a intimate working knowledge of all the systems. So it really uh, it makes for a better operation overall. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Have a good rest of the show, and we'll uh, we'll keep in touch. I think I'm on with you in, in, in another month, Pete. So yep. we'll get you guys all updated on what we're doing to the boat, and hope like heck there's some great fishing to report on then. No kidding. Hey, safe travel back home, uh, Tim, and uh, appreciate the call from live from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, aboard the Royal Star. Appreciate that call very much. Sounds like a, a good time. Sounds like a good trip. Absolutely. Good, no, yeah. put, put together a nice yeah. trip. I mean, you know, like flash in the pan, a little good fishing here, a little good fishing there, and eight days worth of fishing, you're going to put together a pretty darn nice catch. Yeah, very good. Tom and Temecula, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Morning, guys. Uh, good morning, I think it's a little bit uh, earlier than usual here, the time change. But uh, I have a question, Brian. Um, how do you guys set the drag on your uh, on your reels when you're fishing for those big tuna? And how how heavy of a drag do you set uh, your reels at? And uh, how much does that play into how quickly you're going to land the fish? And I know each fish is a little different. Two Brian's. Let's get two opinions. All right. So here you go. I set the drag by hand, and I set it by feel and by sound um, for the line class that's there. And what that usually works out to is about a quarter of the breaking strength of the line. And I'm probably of the the little bit lighter drag school in that I want that hook to get in there and get seated and that fish to take a little bit of line 
before you start tightening up. Let that fish burn a little bit of energy in that first run, and then you can start to, to heavy it up in order to land the fish. But a quarter of the breaking strength is a good starting point. Um, and if you're not sure what that is, utilize the experience of the crew. Those guys are down there every day. Hey, man, I've got six rigs. Can you check the drags for me? And check them every morning. Every morning. Every morning before you put a bait in the water with that rig. If you haven't fished it for a couple of days, those things do have a tendency to swell. They'll pick up a little salt, a little water, temperature difference. And, you know, the, the reels today are such fine machines that it actually changes a little bit. Brian? Dra uh, drag settings, our strike position is merely a point of reference. So if, if you were to set your, drags, your strike setting at 25% of the line, you would never land a fish if you left it at strike. When, when you hook a fish, you're backing off all the time. You're letting that fish take line, like Gerby said. At the end of the fight, you're past that strike position all, almost all the way up to full. Lock it or, up, right? Or, or more. Or you or pull more. out of gear and crank the preset up to where you don't know where it is and go back and just set it by hand nice and still. So the, your, whole, your whole strike setting, it's just merely a point of reference. It's merely a point of reference. You have those big fish with those big tails and big bodies, and you don't have enough drag pressure. You're never going to land that fish. If it's a give-and-take situation at the end of the fight, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. So you've got it, to give it's it to a, them It's a end, take, right? take, take, take. Yeah, I, I always say there is no such thing as a Mexican standoff. Either line's coming in or line's going out. But if it's going in and coming out and going in and coming out, and, going, and you're doing that not gain thing on the same six feet of the line, you're never going to land it. Never going to work. So you just got to – and, and, yeah, maybe you'll pull a hook. You're not going to break the line if you're fishing the right line, right? Things could chew, happen. But it, but chew, chew offs, chew broken offs. knots, broken yeah. connections, a little a little predation from the tax man, sure. whatever happens to be going on that day. Yeah, but give it to them at the end. Oh, uh, yeah. Once Once they can't break it crank it up and turn the handle all the long range boats you just have to listen to the crew that's the key they're excellent lamaze coaches they'll teach you <laughs> they'll, they'll walk you through the whole birthing process yeah and no, that's a good point thanks a lot for the call this morning good question there tom appreciate that that does free up 877-792-1090 let's talk to mike in san diego mike welcome to let's talk hookup good morning good morning good morning fellas um got a quick question for you guys still trying to swallow my pride here a year later um, on bluefin behavior. You know, we had several instances last year where we could have capitalized but didn't. Saw a lot of those things just kind of floating and shining and wouldn't eat anything. And just wondering what you guys think those things are doing when they're doing that. Are they are they mating, digesting, you know, just trying to make some sense out of it? Oh, they're not mating for sure. Those bluefin tuna only spawn in the western Pacific. So they're, they're, there's no bluefin spawning that goes on on our coast. So that fish is probably up there burping, digesting, warming up, and, and just cruising. They're um, warm-blooded They're warm -blooded bluefin are, right? Yeah, all tuna. Yeah, yeah. All it's one of those things. It, it's their mode. You know, we, we, we've we seen them shining and breezing like that, and we get on them. It's everybody on the boat has been on. And we've also seen it, like how it has been the last few years, you, you get a, you get up on on these schools and it's just no reaction. They want nothing to do with you. So it's and just, what do you do then? Put on a straight jacket and enter a padded room. <laughs> Pretty much that's it. I mean it, it's just you just go look for another school, right? Play the cards we're dealt with, and then we're dealt with the non-biting school. It's just they're they're, they're not going to bite. You just got to like you say, look for another one. Yeah, look for another one. Hope you get a different time of day. Something changes in the mode they're in. Yeah, indeed. Hey, good question, though. I saw it. We all saw it last year, man, the frustrations. And, you know, the stuff is like practically crashing the side of the boat, but you can't get a bite. You can maybe snag one, but they won't bite, right? But that's about it. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's talk to Brian in Pomona Valley. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, guys. I'm down here at the Fisherman's Processing watching the plane fly over. Very in nice. America, but uh, it went on the Shogun three-day trip. The yellowtail was kind of slow, but I did manage to get two, and I won the jackpot, so I was happy. Nice. And then, uh, we got a lot of big reds, a lot of big reds, uh, so it was a really good trip. It was a three-day uh, uh, freezer special on the uh, on the Shogun. On the Shogun, yeah, that Fathom 4.0 narrows two-speed. You hook them on that high speed, and then you... 
grind them in on the low speed once you get them out of that rock. It works beautiful. Nice deal. And Fisherman's Processing was down there to meet you and uh, going to uh, fillet and vacuum pack all your fish in beautiful order, huh? Uh, they're waiting for me to pick it up right now. So. Oh, all right, Brian. Glad you got them. How was the weather? Uh, it was nice. Nice weather. A little foggy, a little windy. Not too bad. Nice. Very nice. Well, congratulations. You picked certainly the right weekend to go fishing on, on the show. Guys. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate Have the, a good one. Appreciate the call this morning. Chuck and Dana Point, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Chuck. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Good. The water was beautiful yesterday out of San Clemente. I was on the ferry. I think it's the bluefin are coming. But my question is, do we have a problem with burning the meat? I keep hearing that on TV and stuff, on a rod and reel. Is that something we need to worry about? Um, I, I think it's something that you just see depending on the fish and how excited it gets and how much uh, right. it moves that stuff out of its system. So every individual is different. A few of the fish are going to be burned just naturally. But there's definitely mm-hmm. some steps that you can take to, to ensure that it doesn't worsen. You know, it, you don't accentuate the problem if that fish is going to burn. And a lot of that is taking care of it, getting it bled and getting it cold from the inside out yeah, so and the I, outside I in right once away. you've caught that fish. Yeah. Right I, away, I, would, right? I would let it bleed out but get it gilled and gutted within, you know, two, three minutes if you can, if you have the ability to do that. One thousand yeah. percent. That, that, that's, that's it right there, taking care of it after you catch. As far as it burning up with its own lactic acid, I mean, it's. Some of, some of them yeah. do, some of them don't. I mean, I, I know we take really good care, and Brian does a phenomenal job on his boat as well. And we see a certain percentage of the fish that they get a little bit of burn along the spine, and they've all been handled the same. So there's some individual characteristics that happen with that. You know, some of them dump more more lactic acid into their system or, or more adrenaline, more other hormones, but when they're being caught. And it's just an individual thing, but that care after you've caught the fish and Getting that thing bled and getting it cold makes all the difference in the world. Not slamming it down on the deck, right? Being gentle with the fish. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll... All that stuff makes a huge difference in the quality of the meat. you got to listen to these guys because this is what they do for a living, right? I mean, it's uh, it's it, it, it makes that that bleed the, the spiking, the bleeding, the cleaning yeah. out, pitting it on ice. The pithing, yeah, all that stuff just makes for a better quality product. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've basically made a reputation with p- pulling phenomenal quality fish off the boat. No doubt about it. Hope that helped you out, Chuck. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson's on the line. What's up, Gundy? I'm on the run. Gundy, pick me up. I'm right here. Uh, hey, uh, 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 just boobulate. Uh oh, got a bad connection with you, Gundy. Let's uh, let's go ahead and try try back, try again, okay? Appreciate it. All the, right. All right, thanks. All right, Don and Dana Point, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Don. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing this beautiful foggy day here in Dana Point? <laughs> hey, good morning. <laughs> hey, um, a quick question. Um, I've always been a Calstar uh, rod kind of guy, and there's a local company here that's popped up. Uh, Called OC Rods. I just wonder if any of you guys have ever used any of their gear or had any 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 opinion on it or what, what was going on. Guys, I have no no experience. No, yeah, I, I, I haven't I haven't seen them and I haven't seen them on the boats yet. Um, OC Rods. Yeah, I don't, is is it no, a is it a blank manufacturer or is it just a shop that's wrapping rods? I mean, I I don't know. Um, they're a, a, a small manufacturer here in Mission Viejo and. Um, the stuff's really lightweight and super strong, but um, I, I, I was just kind of wondering about that. And I uh, was glad to hear from uh, the, the guys out at, at Clement today. I was going to take a run out there on my on my boat, but uh, it was so foggy this morning, I just decided not, not to make the run and try to make a run tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, and if maybe one of our listeners have had uh, some experience with that uh that that ride company but uh not not uh not us over here hey thanks a lot for the call okay gundy let's try again what's up does this sound a little better yeah a lot better but we, uh, we only have about 45 seconds though okay i'll make it quick pete a couple things i just wanted to thank all those involved for that fishing trip pete it was just fantastic don hansen donna mike hansen alex the sports barber Gary White, Patrick G, Rich Holland, George Club, Alan Sheridan, Calico Al, Bill, Dave Piper, everybody involved. I just wanted to thank you. It was just a tremendous day, and uh, I just 
you guys helped me get back up on my feet, and I, I'm eternally grateful for all my friends in the sport fishing community. I just wanted to say that. That's cool, man. Thank you very and much, Gundy, and you well deserved. Fishing, big, big perch up north, two pound, nine and a half ounce perch. Took the derby up there at Wiley's. Uh, lots of halibut in the shallows, so we'll get into more of it next week, and I'll be on time, Pete. I got my act together here. <laughs> All right, Gundy. Thanks. <laughs> nice to hear from you. I'm glad you're getting it back together. Appreciate the call this morning. Hey, you know, Captain Clower's Bay Bash Shootout, a benefit for our good buddy Captain Clower, who's going through a lot of stuff with cancer right now, is going to be April 9th. Yeah, it is Day of the Docks Day that day, but uh, 7 a.m. and then a 1 p.m. 7 a.m. Uh, uh, start and a 1 p.m. weigh-in still gives you time to get over today at the docks on April the 9th. Uh, but if you want to make donations, uh, anybody that wants a donation for the raffle, which is going to be a huge raffle, Chris Blackwell's coordinating all that, you can drop it off at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Uh, the guys at Fisherman's Landing Tackle will take all those donations for the Bay Bass. And so if you have something to donate for uh, Captain Clowers for the raffle, drop it off at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. They'll take it. And when we come back, we're going to wrap things up, tell you about next week's show. Stay tuned. Let's talk. Go, go. Mighty 1090. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trip from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. We are proud to say Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering half-day trips on the Dolphin, and now, for the first time in the long history of Fisherman's Landing, we have three-quarter day open party trips on the Liberty. We built the Liberty specifically to offer a better experience. Run by veteran captain Taro Takeuchi, the 85-foot Liberty is the first open party three-quarter day boat to offer bunks for your comfort. She also has huge bait capacity and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big galley and two interior heads with showers. Our open party trips from half day, three-quarter day, or one to three day trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. It's Fred Hall show time and Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the best selection and the hottest deals in the show. If it's Daiwa you're after, look no further. Buy any Daiwa reel over $100 from Fisherman's Landing Tackle and get a free Saltus rod while supplies last. And don't miss the new Saltiga Star Drag Reel from Daiwa. That's Daiwa and Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Yamaha's Choose Reliability sales event is on. For a limited time, purchase a new select eligible 2.5 to 300 horsepower four-stroke upward and receive either two free years of Yamaha extended service coverage or up to $1,500 in dealer credit. Reliability starts here. Yamaha. Offer ends March 31st, 2017. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 24-month Yamaha limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha upward dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. Imagine being home in the morning and fishing yellowtail and calicos at Cedros Island by the afternoon. Now you can with Cedros Adventures. Experience world-class yellowtail and calico fishing aboard comfortable pongas with local captains that know the island hotspots. Stay in Cedros Adventures' own private waterfront hotel and experience first-class meals and service with pickups in L.A., Orange, or San Diego County. You hop aboard a scheduled flight to Cedros Island to begin an incredible experience. Trips are all included and offer old world hospitality and fantastic fishing. Cedros Adventures. Call 310-435-6353 or check cedrosadventures.com for rates and more information. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Congratulations, Glenn in Fallbrook. You are the winner of a three-quarter day pass on the San Diego from C4 Sport Fishing and two tickets to the Fred Hall Del Mar Show, which is coming up March 23rd through the 26th. And, wow, what a thrill to have both of you in the show. Brian Sims, Brian Kiyohara, 
How do we get a hold of you, Brian Kiyohara, on the American Angler? Want to go fishing on that fabulous American, American Angler. Angler Sport Fishing or 619-223-5414 and talk to Lori. Talk to Lori. She's awesome and does a great job in the office, as does Tracy in your Royal Star office. How do we get a hold of you? Well, if you want to talk to Tracy, you get her at 619-224-4764 or royalstarsportfishing.com. Oh, don't forget, take advantage of those openings in June on both those boats because that's a great time of the year. And uh, thank you, guys. That was fun. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, thanks for and having us. And, hey, glad you all turned your clocks ahead there and got up with us this morning. We'll be back. Next Saturday, Ron Lane from Fast Lane Kayaks and Hobie Pro staffer Jim Salazar are going to be in the studio with Rick and myself. Bart Hall and Mike Lum from the Fred Hall Shows on Sunday. Thanks for listening today. Thanks to Ryan. Thanks to Adam on the other side of the glass. We'll see you back here on the Mighty 1090.